Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm recording at a friend's place and as you probably saw in the opener, it's absolutely beautiful. We actually used to live at this end of town when we first moved here and uh, it's lovely to be back. It's sort of a quieter part of town, a little outside of the center and uh, you might even get to hear the waves because as you can saw again from the opener, um, I'm looking right at them. So it's a beautiful place to be. So today I have another sweater to unravel for you. You guys really liked the last video and I wanted to do a few more over the next little bit. And so I'm just gonna show it to you and then I'm just gonna get into unraveling it and I hope that you just enjoy watching the process. So today I have this sweater. And this is a men's large sweater that I thrifted on Vinted and it is 100% cashmere. Now, if you look up close, you can see that this is probably a DK weight, maybe even a worsted. I think it's probably a DK weight. It's quite marled. I have soaked it and washed it in wool wash, and it is beautiful. I can show you the tag. There's not a tag of the maker, but there is a tag that says, and it's kind of folded over, but it says 100% cashmere made in Italy. And uh, I bought this, this was on sale for 40 euros and I bought it for 30. Now 30 is quite a bit for a thrifted sweater, but for this much cashmere in a w thicker gauge, which is so unusual, I thought it was worth it. I am already mostly done the last sweater that I started with reclaimed yarn, and so I can't wait to start on this because it is so cozy. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that's both sleeves done. And uh, this has been interesting because the construction is different. And I didn't realize that this is all one piece. See, here's the neck. No shoulder seams, so clearly it's not going to, it's not going to unravel from the top down. So now I've got to come down to one of the hems and see if I can get it going from here. But I've closed the windows now because it's a little bit chilly. It is January after all. And even though it is beautiful out, I'm a little bit chilly. So I'm going to now see if I can get this started at the hem and see what we can do. Okay, so this sweater is making me work for it. It is making me work for it big time. So I, as you saw, I got the sleeves done and then I had to separate by hand the ribbing, which took quite a while. And then I thought I'd be scot-free, but, but at the end of here, at the end of every row, the yarn twists on itself. It twists, it twists here. And so it doesn't go automatically go right back again. So every time I get to the end of a row, I have to loosen it and loop it through the edge stitch because they've done a twisted edge stitch on every row. So that's gonna take me a while and I'm not gonna make you sit through that. Um, what I am going to do is continue to do this by hand and show you the result in the end, but it probably won't be today because this is gonna be me sitting in front of the TV tonight getting this done. However, it's still gonna be amazing. It's very, very soft. I already have two good size cakes and once I have it all done and I have the meterage or the grams, probably more than the meterage, um, I will put that up here and you can see. And then uh, I was going to set, give you a couple of ideas. Well, I'll put in a couple of pictures of a couple of, a couple of ones that I'm thinking of. And so if you have a preference, please let me know below. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I wish it was a little more straightforward and I could have shown you the process easily, but the, the cashmere is making me work for it. It's a luxury fiber and it's having its luxury <laughs> unravel, <laughs> but uh, that's fine. Slow making, right? And uh, it doesn't bother me. Well, uh, uh, no, that's that li I lie. It irritates me a bit, but it's not like clearly not the end of the world. Okay, I'm back. It is the next day and uh, it, it ended up being not quite as bad as I thought. The back panel, for some reason, at the end of every row, the stitch was twisted and so I had to feed it through every time, which was just, you know, sitting at home and whilst dinner was cooking, I, I did that. It was fine. And then once I got past... Once I got past the shoulders, the portion at the top where the neck was, was all the ends were, were cut, not because I cut them, but for some reason they ended uh, at the neckline. And so I ended up unraveling all that part later. And then I just cut it and started down the front and the front went back and forth, no problem. So dun da da da, here is all of the yarn from that sweater and I have kept three bits of ribbing that I could use um, and the neckline. Uh, this is the back hem, one of the hems I couldn't salvage. So th this, so here's, here's what it looks like. And you can see I'll put in a little video. I measured so first of all, I weighed each ball and the ribbing and including the ribbing, I'm at 500 grams of this cashmere yarn. 
Um, clearly it is many strands together, which achieves that. And then what I did was I wound off 10 meters and then I weighed that 10 meters, which came to three grams. And so my approximate meterage is 1,666 meters of yarn, which does not put it in a DK category. It puts it more in a sport category. However, looking at it and also looking at the sweater it came from, it really was much more of a DK weight gauge. So I, f I probably have the flexibility to do either, frankly. It's just so satisfying to have this beautiful yarn all caked up and ready to go. And uh, once I am done my cardigan, it will be next on the needles. Okay, so this is my last check-in on that beautiful cashmere yarn that I unraveled about two and a half weeks ago now, and now I'm wearing it. So to tell you the process of that, basically I did a swatch and my swatch did not match the gauge or even close to the gauge of the sweaters that I had been considering. It turns out that this was much more DK worsted weight, which I did suspect, but then when I did the meterage, I wasn't sure. Anyway, uh, I ended up choosing the Terrazzo sweater from Petite Knit. And as you can see, it is just classic and beautiful. I'll put in a picture of the original and then I'll put in some photos of me wearing it. Um, and I'm so pleased with this. I knit this up in two weeks, less than two weeks even, because I was also working on a cardigan, which I've also finished. So you'll see that next time, also in reclaimed yarn. I have um, steam blocked this. I have not fully wet blocked it, but as you can see, like it's, it's definitely um, smoothed out with the steam blocking. And on top of that, I only used, basically I have 200 grams of the cashmere left and so i can do a hat or a pair of mitts i did not use the the ribbing from the original and that's because this needs 15 centimeters of twisted rib and i didn't want to mix ribbing so i have the ribbing left over and maybe i might use it for the brim of a hat or maybe like i said for cuffs of mittens i'm not sure yet but to get this beautiful sweater in 100 percent DK worsted cashmere for 30 bucks. I'm pretty pleased. So I'd love to hear if you are working on anything right now, um, what you're working on. Is it in reclaimed yarn? Is it in purchased yarn? I mean, I think there's a place for both, right? I'm not saying I'm never gonna buy yarn again. And I have a huge stash of yarn that I've already purchased, but there's something about um, taking something that might end up not being ever used again, or may end up in a landfill. Like you just don't know with, with secondhand stuff, right? And it, it does end up often in a landfill. So to take it and reuse it into something makes me really, really happy. And I know that I'm going to wear this for many years to come. And the original, I probably would have used as maybe a cozy up on the couch sweater or a sleeping sweater, because I do like to sleep in, in, in thrifted cashmere sweaters. <laughs> um, in fact, I have two that I kind of rotate between. But this is something that I think is going to be a classic in my wardrobe for a really long time. Okay, guys, that's all for me. I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are knitting or sewing or frogging a sweater or doing whatever makes your crafty heart happy. And I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I always forget to say that. If you enjoy this, please do like and subscribe. Okay, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.